Hey guys, what is up? Lord Nick here, bringing you another episode of the Dangerous Game Podcast. This week, I am joined, as always, by Sark. I almost said Frank, because I'm thinking about Frank Gore. Sarcasm. And I am being joined also by Goomba. And he's back, so we don't have to put his name in the in the title anymore. And we don't have to tell you guys to go harass his Twitch stream, but feel free to do so. Wait a second, is that real? came from you put his name in the title of the uh, last i i think i did i think i i named the last one after where is where is goomba let me see let me go see what oh did it not have a title uh no i didn't title that one so the one before was enter the goomba i was gonna name it what happened to goomba uh but i guess i just didn't i guess i could change it now but yeah that'd be fake be fake but uh so uh how you guys been this week? What's what you guys' week been like? Sorry, you go first. You to go first, Game Bro. Okay, I'll go first. I'll go first. <laughs> just kidding, you go first. No, I'm no, just kidding. Don't make me answer my own damn question. I, I, can, I haven't been really been doing anything, dude. I got I got gold in uh in Wild Rift. Like you know, the new game that I'm moving to. It's in League of Legends, and then um, I don't know. I played a few normals and like one flex, but I think that's it. I didn't really do much League related stuff this week. I played PUBG last night. That was pretty fun. PUBG, oh, dude. Yeah, that's about it. My week's been good though. Nice. Okay, <laughs> my week was pretty pretty average, I guess. I don't know. Uh, nothing really changed. Just. Work, Valorant, League, sometimes uh, crying, usual. Wait, sometimes what do you crying. Do for work? Sorry. What do you uh, do for I work. Me? I work. Uh, I work nights, and I just basically restock shelves. Oh, oh that was a solid job. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I just kind of thought, hey, I'm up till four a.m. anyway. Might as well work. And it's pretty great. So am I possibly the only one that's been experimenting with all the changes this patch? Uh, yes. I don't play League very often, so... Same. I Actually, I do play League often, but... He's playing Wild Rift now. He's a, he's a Chinese mobile gamer now. Oh, no. He's gonna move over to Wuhan and become a pro player. I mean, am I real free? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And you choose to name that place. Why? Well, yeah, I chose Wuhan. I'm sorry. Wasn't that where the final trail people were played recently? I think that's where they were played. I know that's where I know where that's I know that's where COVID started, but uh, what is it? I don't know. I really doubt they're gonna choose that city or area. hundred uh, percent. I, I feel right. China would be that place to do it. Just be like, hey guys. Either way, they had a lot of people in there. I don't think they care about coronavirus anymore in China. They had a stadium of like 30,000 people or some crap for the finals. Um, anyhow. Uh, they individually tested each person. Come on. Oh, 100%. Yeah. They, they did. made them camp outside in tents for like the eight hours until they got their result. It was great. I don't know how long it takes. Totally. Totally an eight-hour process. That's... That's it. Just... I don't know. Maybe it takes a day. Maybe it takes four minutes. I don't. <laughs> and the same thing for MMA events. events too. No, they just had that lady out there that just kept putting her hand against everybody's forehead and being like, "All right, you're good. Get in here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Uh, I know someone who didn't get on a flight, uh, or like they they. I don't know if they got on, but they got in trouble because they were in the airport and they had to run to get to there. And they since they were wearing like a. Like a jacket in do- indoors, they were running and they were carrying their bag. They were like really warm when they got there. Oh no! So, yeah, that di- that didn't go well. I honestly don't remember if they got on, but <laughs> and it was going to China during the middle of the pandemic, so it was <laughs> rip. Yeah, it was uh interesting. And those flights are like five k each. Oh no! No 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 no! No one will lose that much money. <laughs> That's not good. So back to the to the patch though, um, so a big change that happened if you guys didn't read it was a change to Rumble, 
and really? not not the Ramus R rework or the new champ, the Rumble one. Rumble. Mm -hmm. So this is one that I think floats under the radar because there's the champ, the new champion. There's that giant jump that Ramus gets to do, which I think actually made him a worse champion overall. Much worse, yeah. He feels so much worse to be honest, because it's so much easier to int on him now. Um, it, looks, it looks cooler, so it's okay. Yeah, it looks neater. It's a funner ability, but it's definitely a much easier way to int. Um, Gwen, I think, is just a little bit clunky as you're starting to play against people with hands. She just feels clunky. Um, but Rumble, Riot changed him to try to make him more suitable for the top lane opposed to the mid lane. So they nerfed his MR. Not that big a deal. Um, they buffed his E to shred some magic resist from people. Shred more. Which is dope. Um, the biggest change that Riot decided to make was, hey, if you overheat, you get a 50% attack speed buff. And your damage is no longer based off of, just strictly based off of your AP. It's now a 6% HP flat plus like a percent every 100 AP or some crap like that. It's max health plus 30 AP. I don't think it scales with a... Max plus 30 AP. The max health. Oh, there you go. Plus 30 AP. If, yeah, okay, there you go. 6% base. I, I've That's a bork them. on your autos. <laughs> yeah, I've been asking them to do this this kind of thing for a long while. Like, I Rumble, I, I loved him in the top lane, but he just never was able to deal with tanks. I always wanted him to be able to deal with tanks. Uh, like, the only champion that I really ever picked him into was Nar, because it was a... Uh, oh, no, sorry. I picked Nar into Rumble. Fuck, what did I pick Rumble into? I was gonna say that. Doesn't that sound sounds like a lot. terrible like, matchup. I, I remember I remember the matchup was, like, something. But then I, I remember I picked Nar into Rumble. I don't know, I picked it into some champion. It's been, like, Season 6, so it's been five years since that. So I, don't, I honestly don't remember. But I used to play Rumble a bit. And uh, he was always really fun. Well, it's not possible on Reddit complaining that they don't know... They don't understand the hitbox of Rumble Key when I was so confused. <laughs> so, Wait, who? who was complaining? Reddit. <laughs> oh, Reddit. They were complaining that the Reddit's queue doesn't seem very clear where the hitbox is and stuff. It's in front of him. And, yeah, and it's like, well, clearly, it's not like a normal skill shot. He can move with it, so it's not going to be in the same place the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Reddit likes to complain about everything, though. Like, that's just Reddit at this point. Yeah. There's just a complain station. But this is going, like, majorly under the radar. Mind you, he has a 17% pick rate in the jungle right now. But previously, I paid attention to this, and he had a win rate of, like, 44%. It's up to 47% now. Which is just a good buff <laughs> to jungle rumble. Mind you, I haven't touched Rumble in like a year and a half. I started to play him just over this past week like nine times or something like that. And in those games, like each game, I'm starting to feel him a bit better. I am now consistently able to do a five camp clear, contest the first scuttle on spawn, go back, finish my sixth camp, start my clear again to start doing this. Because uh, the, now, if you also didn't know, they, they nerfed uh, Lucidity Boots, so they cost 950 which means you have to start doing a second full clear to be able, like, extra camp or two to be able to afford them. So it's just better to finish your clear before you do it. So now you have to go finish a second clear before you back. At that point, you're sitting at 1,100. So this benefits Rumble because you can just get Sork Boots. And because your passive damage is magic, you now are doing Shred from your E, you go into overheat, you start just wailing on camps, clearing them. Um, before Sork Boots, you can actually solo the dragon at level 4. Um, th there's a lot of weird shit that Rumble can do that he couldn't do before. And he is also just disgusting at early skirmishes, by the way, now. Because as you are fighting somebody, you're burning them down, they're trying to repace against you. You start overheating, and that used to be everybody's moment of jump him now. But as they jump you, you just turn around and hit them for 6% of their max HP, and their response is, oh shit, run. And you get another auto or two in before they get to, and then your abilities are back and you can chase them down and kill them. He's kind of gross. Like, to be perfectly honest, he is just disgusting right now how much damage he is outputting. Um, 
And I don't honestly think this is going to be a good buff for him in the top lane meta. Like you said, Gnar is what you picked into him. And Gnar is like the best top lane pick right now, still. Like he's still the highest picked top laner. Yeah, I've only recently gotten back into Gnar, but I used to play him in... He was one of the first camps I bought when I started playing top. And I put him in like season 5 and 6. And I managed to get like 300k on him. And I always loved playing him back then because he was quite good. But I always played him, and I got back into playing him in like season seven. But Rumble was really OP, and even though it was a good matchup in the past, I just could never beat Rumble. And now uh, that Nara is like really OP again, I've kind of started playing him just because he's just a necessary top laner to play. But he's like, I think it's gonna be just like Rumble Nara in the top lane again during this uh, patch for this season, I guess, if they try and force Rumble back into top. Because he's always a really good pick for pro play. Because your ulti is just ridiculous. And also, Nara is just really good in pro play as well. But, um, I don't know. I, it's just, top lane is just weird. The meta is constantly trying to change. I think Rumble's been picked more top when tanks are actually top than, than like, fighters. Because yeah. Rumble, like, sucks against all in champions. Like, Aurelia, Riven, stuff like that. Where, because you want someone who's, like, gonna be standing there with you but can't just all in you yeah no. rumble's level one is pretty strong when no one when they can't fight him yeah uh but like if they're able to fight him it's just useless and once he hits level three he's just like one of the strongest champs in the game I think actually maybe it's more likely that he goes back mid than top i hate it rumble I'm sorry, yeah. I just, I just yeah it. unless unless like tanks like immobile tanks are top again I yeah. don't see him going back mid again. The only reason I don't see him going back mid is while that MR like nerf doesn't seem huge, um, it's enough of one for somebody like Oriana. It's enough of one for if they wanted to pick like Syndra. You know, these people that kind of are good at zoning away from him and that are both somewhat in the meta. I think it's enough of one where he can't bully them early. Now note um with this buff to his passive he does actually feel really good in the late game still yeah um one of the things i also got to realize with it is most of laning rumbles generally like to max e second in the jungle i max his shield second because if i'm not fighting somebody it allows me to move around more i get to heal i don't get to take damage from camps um and with it getting a lower cooldown i can spam it more to get my overheat a little bit better so um with it though i've developed a bit more of a style of just kind of like waiting for my ultimate to be up kind of what you do with rumble anyways but like i get to just go clear camps and not have to deal with people which just means that my bad matchups are kind of ignored because now i'm just playing pve run <laughs> rumble um and his clear is really really good after sork boots i clear faster than udir like, it's kind of nutty how fast I can clear camps after that. And then as I start getting items, you know, you're going to clear them faster. Um, I've done Night Harvester on him. And I think uh, he just kind of abuses this bad item. As a lot of a lot of top analysts think it's a terrible item. Um, but for Night somebody... Huh? They think Night Harvester is a bad item? Yeah. Yeah. Like on rumble or just in general in general not not specifically to rumble but just in general they think it's a bad item statistically speaking it's not like super busted and it's burst passive is comparable to that of like proto belt so why not just take proto belt um but i like the uh the little bit of ability haste it gives you it's actually kind of nice um I've been liking it because with Rumble, I just drop an ultimate and it, like, half health somebody instantly. Yeah, but also if you buy Leandres, then when you hit them with any spell, then they're, it's like a Morgana route, but, like, it's burning. So they're just constantly in pain. Yeah, so I've, I've tested the Leandres as well. Um, and against tanks, I think Leandres is the way to go. If they don't have a single tank on their team, though, Night Harvester just does the job better. Uh, because they don't have time to respond at that point. Like, Leandries, they constantly burn, and then they get kind of some chances to kind of fight back a little bit, kind of. 
Um, with the Night Harvester, I have found that they don't get a chance to respond back because I drop them under half health, and so they have to back away immediately. And because they have to back away right then, they don't generally get the confidence to come back in and take the fight. Yeah, no, every single pro is going Night Harvester and occasionally Protobel when they're against a uh, mobile champ. Is it, is it only jungle around below? Mostly jungle, but there's some, like, some mid and some top. I will just say, the main reason people max E on a uh, rumble and lane is for poke, and also when you when you activate your overheat with your E, you get the extra one, you mm -hmm. get the extra E or second charge of E, so you can use that while in your overheat for an extra ability and to slow them so you can hit them more. That's like the main reason, and also your W just isn't that useful. Yeah, but yeah, it's pretty much just for the like the slow and like the I guess the the magic resist is gonna be really really nice now yeah um does it slow increase as you would want it does not the slow increase oh no no, no. slow slow increases uh the magic resist uh the magic does not uh the pen that it gives you or whatever uh, i don't believe it does yeah it increases the slow when you level it uh and it does it does increase the slow by a small amount um uh, about it over doubles 15 to 35 okay so at the end of it, it it's, it's pretty worth it I haven't found a use for it in the jungle, though, just because, again, like, in the jungle, like, you're not really poking people, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like, your your job is slightly different, and maxing out the W, getting it on slightly lower of a cooldown, just means that you can clear your camps faster, because you get to your camps, in between your camps faster, you can spam it more, so you have more overheat by the time you get uh, to your camps. I, so, I will just say your W actually doesn't reduce the cooldown. It doesn't? If No. Then it must just be as I'm building ability haste, but yeah, none of his abilities go on uh, lower cooldowns. Actually, no, I think his Q does, but his W and E just stay the same cooldown. Yeah, you just build ability haste, and it feels uh feels shorter, I guess. I guess, yeah, but uh, I mean, it does get shorter in the end because of the amount of ability haste that I'm getting. But uh, let me see here. I should try a uh, Everfrost. Honestly, that, that sounds so fun. I, you I, do no damage, but like you just you just like root them and start burning them. I could be. It would be fun to play. Very unfun to play against, but it just wouldn't work. Let me see here. Oh, but the movement speed does increase, so that does help a lot. Um, shield strength increases, which is negligible. I mean, it's nice, but it is somewhat negligible. Um, the movement speed does help because, I mean, the biggest thing about jungling right now, the people that break the jungle meta, is the fact that they can do it so damn fast. And they come out of nowhere. Um, while Rumble isn't as fast as them for ganks, once you have six, you can start it from a lot longer range than they can. Um, yeah. and it generally will force somebody to flash right as you drop that ultimate, because if they don't, they're slowed, they're burning, and whoever you're ganking for can generally jump on them and kill them. Um, so it also makes it so like those people that are generally really hard to gank for uh, as a jungler becomes a lot easier because you're you don't have to commit yourself as much half the time you just have to commit an ultimate uh which today in our uh flex or not flex uh clash game i got my ultimate down to a 30 second cooldown um yeah it goes ridiculously low and it cooldowns are and it's gross because it also does it on cast so for the five seconds that it lasts uh which means that i had about a 25 second cooldown on my ultimate um which is gross <laughs> that is that is nutty i got it off three times in a dragon fight it was really gross how long is that still <laughs> a dragon fight lasted a minute and a half really it was for soul fight and so nobody wanted to take the fights really and i dropped it once killed off one of their members I'm, I'm calling for my team to start going for it. They come in, my team peels off, I'm stuck there at the dragon, it's like, uh, uh, uh. And it's like, alright, I guess I'm sitting here trying to wail this dragon, but I don't want to die. Ulti's off cooldown, drop the ulti again, killed off another person, uh, we're leaving the dragon, and another person started the fight, and it's just like, alright. So I guess it was three mini fights all in once, but it was all within a dragon going for a dragon. That's pretty ridiculous. Um... I also then almost stole a Baron with it, killed two people in the process. <laughs> it's 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 so funny. Um, 
But yeah, that 6% targets max health is just so good for clearing jungle camps and and the 50% of bonus attack speed. So I've been doing Conqueror just because I was curious to see how it works. Oddly enough, Conqueror works pretty funny uh, with him just because as your ulti is ticking on somebody, every new tick of the ulti procs the Conqueror again. Um, yeah, with your ulti. Otherwise, so that would have been ultimates, but not regular abilities because that would just be OP. Yeah. So, like, between it, you know, I overheat. I start hitting somebody really hard. So, like, in overheat, I just start doing a lot more damage, and people are like, what's going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> why is he hitting so hard? Um, it's worked out pretty okay. Um, it hasn't done a whole hell of a lot, but the extra AP does help in the middle of a fight every now and then. Um, I try. I was doing Dark Harvest for a little while. It was working pretty okay. Um, and I think I'm probably going to go back to it. I think it just overall has more benefit in the long run. Uh, but I think I definitely keep Alacrity as a secondary at that point. Just the attack speed bonus is just super nice, and it does really well with your passive. So, um, But yeah, this has been my favorite pick of the patch, <laughs> is Rumble Jungle. I've also been playing a lot of Darius Jungle. I enjoy him a lot, but... I'm really enjoying Rumble Jungle because it was not a buff intended for Rumble Jungle, but it made him viable in the role again. Well, kill Dragon super early with Darius. Yes, like yes, you can. Okay. Yeah, your Q, your Q keeps you at basically full health unless it's a Windrake. Uh, and I fucking, I fucking miss level one Pantheon and level one Nocturne and being able to yes. just take Dragon. <laughs> yeah. I hated that shit. I, I hated that shit. <laughs> Cause I the Pantheon thing was so I fucking mean, weird. Whoever the figured Pantheon, that out. The Pantheon was really hard to do, and you had to set your entire rune page to do it, and it would take yeah. two and a half minutes, and you wouldn't even have a single camp. So you would just sit there taking dragon for like two minutes, and it was great. <laughs> You basically just had to get your passive off red buff and then go and you had to have just enough attack speed to be able to uh, take it. And this was, I think, before jungle items, so you could just buy a dagger or something like that. And it was it was just insane. And you were old Pantheon. And, oh, no, no, no. It was old Pantheon, but you, you, yeah. you take it level one while taking zero damage. Because yeah. you're passive, yes. You can yeah. time, if you timed it just right with your passive, you just, you're fine. Like... <laughs> I, I remember that cheese crap. I hated that crap. I didn't play jungle, but I was bot lane, and I hated it, because it's just like, oh, enemy bot lane just gets an influx of gold. This is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was old dragon, where it would just immediately give you damage. It would always be infernal. It would, it would give you, like, damage, and then towers, and then something else. I don't I don't remember what it, exactly it did. I don't even remember. It's been a long time. Uh, Mountain was the one that allowed you to kill the turrets. Uh, yeah, Infernal right. just gives you a like, giant steroid for fights. Um, you're talking but, about no, the one that, one that was like it was literally only one dragon, and it gave yeah. you it depending on how many dragons you had, you had different stats. Like really really oh yeah, the pseudo elemental yeah. one. Um, yeah, give like a little bit of each, and then if you killed another one, it give you a little more. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Yeah, that was before they did the full-on elementals. It was still just the red dragon thing. Yeah, and the really old-school dragon. <laughs> that gave you gold. Yeah, gave you a turret worth of gold. 250 gold for the team. Let's go. That's kind of huge, though. Uh, Yeah, it was, but it also, like, as the game went on, became less late valuable. Game. Yeah, late game, it literally didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, cool, they got a dragon. Cool, good for you. Like, you're down 6k gold still, but, you know, you got a dragon. Um, yeah, well, that's, that was the dragon I remember people cheesing back in the day. Because so you could do Pantheon crap like that in the past when that dragon spawned. And you just sit there and you just farm up 250 gold and give it to your laner. The really old dragon looked so ugly, dude. It was disgusting looking, but it was, it, it was such an annoying thing. It looked like a floating wizard. <laughs> it looked like your fifth grader's attempt to draw a dragon. That's yeah. what it looked like. It was, it was a, it was yeah, a, oh. I think it was Recall still has it. Wait, seriously? Yeah, the, uh, the arcade one. Uh, so oh, so Oh, yeah, it was. I completely grabbed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Dragon still exists. 
in fucking as real as we call. I like how I think it plays like almost like the Final Fantasy movies in the Final Fantasy too. Which is so fitting because it actually looks like a shitty fucking Final Fantasy seven sprite. Uh, you remember Big Wraith when they first introduced the camp? Yeah. I thought it was so random, and now I'm so glad it's uh... and, and then they're like, it's a white camp. It's like, it's the same, it's the same, like, it's the same thing as a, as a, as a wraith, just bigger. What, what is this? And, uh, I remember, I remember telling somebody recently about that. I don't remember how we got on the topic. Oh, they're talking about how Gromp used to be OP. And I was like, oh yeah, man, if you want to get real OP, it's when they added the sixth camp. And they're like, what do you mean the sixth camp? I was like, there didn't used to be a Gromp. <laughs> there there wasn't anything there. And they're like, what was there? It's like, nothing. It was just a path. <laughs> That's all it was. I, I remember this. I remember this dragon. I played yeah. like, I played end of season four. I mean, I didn't ever take the dragon because I was like, didn't know what I was doing. But, like, I, I remember seeing that dragon. It was good. Thanks, though. <laughs> no problem. Dude. Um, do, do you guys remember uh, Cassiopeia Smite Top? No. no. So you you would uh take smite, obviously. You would smite the Gromp for leash on, uh for your jungler. You would immediately go top, and since it since you had that oh, the burn buff. passive, you would auto them. It would apply poison. Your E would then give you speed and reset, and you would spam on them. <laughs> it, you it, would have poison. I played at that time, and I didn't realize that was a thing. Remember when when you autoed someone? It wouldn't. The minions wouldn't target you. I know, not audited. When you hit them with a single target spell, oh, the minions wouldn't yeah. target you. And you could poke people heard... with Ezreal Q, and it wouldn't target. Oh no! no. I was thinking of Cassiopeia. When Faker played Cassiopeia against some guy, and like killed him at level one, and the guy couldn't see us because of it. Yeah, every everybody would pick old Pantheon into me when I was playing Nar, and it's already a bad enough matchup, and he wouldn't take any yeah. aggro off. No the aggro. Just walk up and chill and walk away. And it, it actually took them like a year so, since El or till after I stopped playing Nar till they changed it. And I'm just like, thank god, and then they fucking reworked him immediately after that, so... It just... Do you remember uh, original Blue Ezreal as they started making actual jungle items? Or like, hey, here's Spirit of the Elder Lizard, and Ezreal's yeah. like, that's nice, I'll take that mid. <laughs> and just yeah. started slaughtering everybody with Smite, Spirit of the Elder Lizard, so dumb. I, I played I played AP Ezreal at that time, and I didn't do Smite. I had no idea. I'm just like, why do people keep doing Smite? This looks so troll. But I just played regular AP. Yeah, Spirit of the Elder Lizard, man. It's just a broken item. Oh, we're still taking Bob. He didn't really go mid till he got Rune Glaive. And then he was like mid every game. Oh god, Rune Glaive. Don't remind me of that item. That was that was an atrocious <laughs> mistake made by Riot right there is what that was. Oh, Rune Glaive was Devourer 2.0. No, no, no. No, no, no. The AP, the AP one that did AoE. It was like an AoE uh... Luden. It was like Ludens, but instead of like only hitting three people, it made like a little pop at the end. Hey guys, oh, we don't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was it was disgusting well, like, on the least. Like Ludens, yeah. It made it a least the most broken champion in the game. Fucking <laughs> literally, fucking yeah. Udir, I guess we're all so fucking oh busted. Oh my god, I remember so many Elises in that season. That was such a painful <laughs> yeah. time. Oh, it was horrid. It was horrid. Just level two gank from an Elise who just freaking repel down on you, and you're just like, oh, that's cool. You're doing, I, I you're doing okay damage. All right, whatever. And then they come back and they're like, hey, I have a full item now. It's like, how the fuck do you get a full item from... <laughs> just kill you, take it a couple camps, come back, full item, and they attack you again, kill you. I'm just like, great. <laughs> I remember item being busted on Udyr, and there was like that comic that was on the front page of Reddit where it was like, it was Ryan, and they were like, we made this for you, and it was for Fiddlesticks, and then Udyr runs by and steals it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, oh, you remember when uh, when they decided, hey, we know you guys like Riggle's Lantern, but you'll love Feral Flare. <laughs> Wait, Feral Flare was actually insane. That yeah, item was like disgusting. Cool. I remember Warwick, dude. You just scale up on Warwick and then you run at somebody with your ulti and you just run at them, ulti, and then they're dead. And they're like, yep, cool, fun. <laughs> I remember a um, 
uh, and I will dominate clip where he was playing old Warwick and just clicked on somebody and then just like just let he just put his hands up on stream and just you oh. to see on the map him running after someone and just killing them. <laughs> I remember that clip. That was so it's so good. That was like everywhere at the time. Oh, the fucking feral flare was disgusting. Sated devourer was disgusting. Just anything that had that like, some reason gave attack speed and stacked was just gross. Just don't don't ever do it. Like don't don't allow this I, to be a thing. Uh, I miss Bloodraiser. I used to build that on AP Nar Jungle, and I'd just run around maxing W and just autoing them like five times a second. <laughs> But like you would in doing that, you would get percent health damage and speed from it, and you also I'd have like basically I'd go from mini to mega within about three seconds, then I'd do yeah. damage. I, but like they'd also be dead within that three seconds. So. I actually tried to build like that on Nar once, and I got so annoyed because I turned mega too fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I just wanted to be a range carry and killed him, and then I kept turning mega. Yeah. Normally it's like, oh my god, Nar's about to hit mega, run! But everyone. Now it's like, oh god, he's turning mini, run! It's just the opposite, it's great. Uh, good times, man. Good times. Back when you weren't forced to do, like, the meta builds. Hey man, I'm not doing meta builds, I'm playing Rumble and Darius Jungle. Yeah, well, to be fair, Rumble's been played about a hundred times by professional players in the last two days. Yeah, they figured it out, too. And, it's not my fault, all right? <laughs> and Darius was played by my jungler, who's just a massive troll, uh, like, a couple days ago. So, I mean, that that's that's definitely just not meta, but... I mean, uh, Darius yeah. isn't meta, but I can see it becoming... The one I see becoming, like, also meta is Morgana jungle. That clear is disgusting. I don't know why Riot keeps thinking, hey, we can make this a jungler. It's like, you oh, didn't yeah. win the last time, motherfuckers, and you did it again. Yeah. Like I said, it was because the other roles have too hard to adjust in your jungle, so they're trying to make other champions able to jungle. Yeah, it's cool that they're trying to do that. Here's the problem with it, at least with Morgana. The last time they did this, she instantly shot up to being a flex pick, a viable, upside. Pretty much everything was done for the year. <laughs> Literally the next patch, nerfed into Oblivion because she was just too broken that patch. They come back almost six, seven months later, and like, we're gonna do it again. It's like, you guys are dumber than fucking boxes of rocks. Like, what the hell are you, what is this? <laughs> like, learn from your mistake. The other ones, not a problem. Mordekaiser, don't think he's gonna start terrorizing the jungle meta, but it definitely allows him to be pseudo-viable. It's really nice throwing an E at Raptors and instantly proccing your passive. It's really cool. Uh, Darius, couldn't clear really well. I really like him. I think he's a great solo queue pick. I would never really want to play him in a competitive viable standpoint, but, you know, he has potential, maybe. Um, at Rumble, I think could actually become competitive. I think we're going to see him at MSI, and I'm going to be a little bit sad because that means I'm going to lose yeah, my pick. I am a jungle. He'll be played in MSI, especially in the tanks. I think Diana's going to come back. I think she needed the buff, and that's not just because I was like, oh, you know what? Like, this is smart of them to move her there. She was originally a jungler back in the day. Like, people just play her more in the jungle back in the day. Wait, what the hell? I'm like, I'm actually losing my mind with Riot Games, though. How do they. See, I, I may be uh, like a NAR player, but I just want them to fix NAR because they keep nerfing mini NAR, and they're going to make him an actual fucking minion. But Meganar is the issue. Like, how do they? How do they still not realize this? Meganar is just so broken. You can stun them three times in a row with no cooldown and get two Qs off in Meganar, doing all of their health. But they still decide, hey, let's nerf Mini Nar. So the problem I think is going to happen to Nar is that because you can't necessarily control the transform, he's really hard to balance. They want to. They want to stop the thing that's being, you know, able to control lane, which is Mini Nar. So they want him to have a weaker lane. But like keep his team fight prowess, which just he's he's a he's a champion that is so drastically different. When you look at somebody like Jace, yeah. for instance, he does similar things, right? And the fact that he has a melee and a range form. Nidalee, same uh, thing. Jace, Jace does everything. Uh, Nidalee, same thing. Elise, well, same thing. But all these champions, at some point or another, have been problem champions because they transform. The easiness between the other three, though, is that you control their transforms. Uh, Nar, you don't. And so it just, yeah. it's such a fine line to walk. Like, do you buff the mini state and let it be OP? 
And then, like like you said, like yeah, there's that situation where you transform too fast, and you're like, shit, now you're in kind of a shit form, and you have to run away. Um, yeah. Or do you that's why, make that that's better for him? That's why, in my opinion, Nar has a really, uh, like, a, quite a high skill floor, because you can't just run around and transform whatever the fuck you want. You have to actually think about it, and you have to take the time to figure out when you need to transform. And it's really easy to just run away. You have to be able to know when to engage. And, like, he, he's not actually that hard once you learn how to play him. But if you're just starting, you just have no fucking idea what's happening. And that's why when he first came out, everyone was like, this champion is awful. Mm -hmm. And he had such a tar terrible win rate. And they ended up buffing him a bunch. And then people figured it out. And he was broken for, like, a year. But he's he's just, like, he's got a pretty high skill floor. But I'm actually so confused. How does Zed's passive work now in Monsters? Uh, what? Did they change it? Did so, it, it, so it, it, yeah, kind of. Uh, it's not like it doesn't do the full damage to them, uh, okay. but it doesn't. It doesn't proc his passive. Doesn't proc the way that it did before. So you don't lose your passive for hitting them. Now you just kind okay. of apply your passive to them, but it does less damage. You never lost your passive for hitting them. Or it, it, the way that they worded it, they they explained it in the patch notes, and it, I don't know, it didn't make a whole lot of sense the way they were saying it. Um, I'm kind of confused. Does it have no cooldown anymore? That's what I'm curious. Because before, it was like, yeah, so we, every single person has a different one. But then yeah, it what? announces that minions no longer have, minions and monsters no longer have a cooldown. Does that mean you can just keep repeat proccing your passive once it's below 50% health? I think so. I think it's supposed to be. Oh my be... god, you can. Oh my god, this is busted. Wait, wait, so every time they're below 50% HP, you can hit them? On minions, yeah. uh, or on monsters, specifically. On minions, on minions. Is it on so, minions as well? Yeah. I mean, It's only on champions minions. that it has a cooldown, though. Yeah, on minions, it doesn't matter. It's impossible to miss minions. Yeah. Before, before, and they changed it. Yeah, every time... Picks all they're... targets once every 10 seconds, applies to enemy champions every 10 seconds. Is But they did cap the damage to 300, so... Yeah. It doesn't scale okay. as you get higher up, but... You literally just keep procking it over and over <laughs> every um... time you auto them, and they don't die. Oh, oh, sorry. It's not camped on all monsters, just on epic monsters. They did reduce the increased damage of 100%, so what the, it's it's a solid change to allow him to have more consistent clear opposed to just random burst in his clear. He now just consistently kills things as it gets lower. Um... It can be fun to the jungle anyway. Um, I don't, I don't see the Zed one popping off as much though, just because. I thought for minions, I thought for a sec, I thought they removed it completely, where it only procs on champions, and then that's not it. Yeah, they worded it really funky, but like I guess this is how they had to word it because it's kind of a weird change. But um, now there's just a block of text for a passive room now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. No. Oh, it's, it's a passive in the text. It just says on champions. It only it has a ten second cooldown. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, yeah, because it won't it won't save the capped amount because it never does. Yeah. Um. I think I think the people that came away with this in the end, like if Darius had gotten the full buff, I think he would have been broken. Uh, because the full buff that was on PBE was five hundred percent instead of three hundred percent. Upside, Riot realized that would have been stupid. Um, downside is I didn't get to feel that stupid. Um, the Diana ones have actually been also kind of under the radar. I think Diana could also just kind of pop up as a as a viable jungle again. Like the damage she does now is kind of nuts, and her clear is really good as long as you have a little bit of understanding of how to clear the jungle. Before it wasn't even that bad. I just think she didn't feel like it to jungle compared to Lane. Wait a second, did Gore Drinkers, Dry Breaker, and Iron Swift remove spell shields? Yes. Anything anything that uh, that damages or counts as an ability will remove a spell shield. And because they're inactivated, they, they are count as an ability. Oh, no, no, okay. It's not like spell or shield busting. It's just removing like a saber shield. Okay. I thought yeah. it just like deleted like a Morgana shield. And I'm no, like, no, 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 no. Exactly. AP does, okay. but... That'd be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be <laughs> stupid. <laughs> That'd be stupid. That'd be so dumb. I'd, I'd abuse that so hard, but yeah, okay. It's just, it's just stupid. Okay. Yeah, like Nocturne, Sivir, all those folks. 
Nocturne Sivir. Banshees and Edgemites. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but let me see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I mean. Uh, oh, good. What? I wish you played all for one with me last night again, but I played a game where I was Zed and I did more damage than the whole enemy team combined. And it was a Mordekaiser. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you see it? <laughs> 17 minutes, you did 40k damage? What were you doing to these people? <laughs> what? I was killing them all, dude. I was so fed. I had more kills than their whole team put together, too. Oh, you're actually just cyberbullying them. <laughs> That's what my team said, too. <laughs> uh, I, need to, I need to find you a clip. It's an old one where I was, um, I was playing Aatrox and Earth, and we literally just sat in their base for about four minutes, just killing them off of spawn. And every time I'd queue them once, I'd get back full HP, and we just killed them for, like, so long. It was just... So that is actually insane with the way the new ability haste works. Yeah. Because, like, you know how normally you do, like, your shadow EQ thing? And then you you can build enough cooldown to E again one more time at the end of it before your shadow disappears? But now you can build enough cooldown to EQ again. I mean, to Q one more time instead of just E. I don't think you have enough energy to EQ again, but you can, like, WEQ and then Q again yeah. before it disappears. Yeah. You used to, you, no, you can always, you, you can usually always Q again if you get, like, 45, but, um... Oh, I guess I just never built 45. Yeah. It's just your Q costs, uh... Your E costs only 30 mana, right? 20. Is it 50 as well? Oh, wait. Your E is 50, and then your W is 20. My bad. Huh. And then the Q is 55. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 it's 55. It goes it's from 70 to 55, right? Or something. It's, like, more expensive. Or unless I'm on drugs. I could just be on drugs. Uh, wait. What is 70? I literally have the wiki open. I'm just going to look it up. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe you're on drugs. I don't know. We can't question these things. Yeah, it goes from 75 to 55. I'm not on drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah. It goes down. Okay. That's what you meant. Don't do drugs. Drugs are bad. Unless your parents tell you to. And and then just question your parents as to why they're telling you to do yeah, drugs. Yeah, that really depends on the parents, honestly. There's some fucked up parents out there. Uh, let's see, what else, uh, most of my questions got answered, because a lot of the questions I had were kind of troll questions this week. I noticed one that isn't exactly, uh, usable this week. What, does Goomba's GF steal him away again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, that, that was, that kind of... More but... champion. Uh, oh, yeah, what, so yeah, let's do that one. What is... A, a, and by off role champions, what I mean is champions that are not meant for the role, not like a role that not your off role, but like, for instance, me right now, I'm playing a lot of Rumble Jungle, which wasn't supposed to be his main role, but now it even looks like it might be become his. Uh, otherwise, I play like York Jungle. I play I play a lot of weird shit, and I wanted to know what is y'all's weird off role champion? Scion. Scion where? Anywhere. Ah, oh, got it, got it. I get, if I get auto filled, I pick Scion. Just nice. play it. Does playing Yasuo ADC count? No, that's that's a secondary role for Yasuo. So now. That's, that's He's listed as an ADC now. Main. So like, you're just a Yasuo ADC man. Let's be honest. Does playing Dragus support count. That's also a thing. Not when you build. Well, not when you build an AP. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? That's what the, aren't the oh no pros are building a tank, I guess. Yeah, because they're betas. Um, Unless they're Chinese, then they're probably building AP. But yeah, dude, yes, I played Yasuo Jungle for a while. I haven't found anything like off meta that's been really fun or off roll champ that's been really fun. I used to play like really weird stuff like Shen Jungle and Ezreal Jungle. 
<laughs> but then they became meta, so... <laughs> Wait, Shen Jungle? Yeah, Shen oh, Jungle was meta for a while. No, no, no. I played Shen Jungle when Shen was the old Shen. I played Shen <laughs> Jungle when Shen was the old Shen. That shit was fun. Your Vorpal Blade allowed you to heal off the camps. It was great. Yeah. Back when the jungle did literally zero damage, so you could take anybody jungle? True. Yeah. That was fun. Good old days, man. Good old days. Stranger Jungle once. That was pretty fun, too. I played it on the new jungle, not the old jungle. I, I play Lissandra jungle from time to time. I wanted to kill someone with scuttle crab. That was the only reason why I did it. Just do that in mid lane. Just go take a scuttle crab and throw it at someone. I'd be missing XP mid. Back back in the uh back in the, like, the OG jungle, my friend and I, uh Jared, we used to play um the unicorns of love thing where he would play TF jungle and I'd play Nartop or LeBlanc mid. And we'd just like stomp everybody because they didn't respect the TF jungle. It was like right oh, after the actual TF one. jungle happened. So he yeah. just, uh, I think he did it before as well because he watched Cowsap. Mm. But that was that was really fun. So can you remember that time when I became a team at a TF ADC main for a while? No. <laughs> Yeah, so TF, I, had, I, I looked it up at one point and I was like, hey, you know what, this was like maybe about three months before they started doing the TF, 80, or the TF jungle strat. Um, and I was looking at TF and I was like, He's, he gives him attack speed, his red card scales off of AD, what if I just max WE, don't put a point in my Q, just play him or in bot lane? All of his cards scale off AD. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you the logic I went with back then, which was I looked at red card and it scaled a lot off of AD. I was like, but that's, yes. That's the thing. Back then, you could say, oh, my E has a 0 0.01 scaling. That means I could build an AD. And then you just take it there and you just. My E had it. no AD scaling, but it gave you attack speed. Yeah. <laughs> so logic was rush a Bork and I can burn through somebody. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, pretty good against Vayne. Yeah. Because you get a stun. Yeah, you stun her and then you ult when she ults. Yeah, there's a there was a lot of things that I was like, man. And at the time, I think Twitch was like the dominant uh, ADC, and it was just like, oh, Twitch comes out of stealth, and then I just stun him, and then his Q means nothing because <laughs> now he doesn't get the attack speed buff, and I have more attack speed than him on average. So I'm just wailing at him with cards. Um, and I had a buddy of mine that I do it with at the time, and he played Leona support, so we literally were just locking down the enemy ADC forever. <laughs> like they just couldn't move. Like Nami Leona and Renekton Leona, that shit was so fun. That cheese bot lane. Oh. Did neither of you remember that meta? I don't. <laughs> I was around for a lot of stuff. I don't remember that meta. It was, I don't know, it was like a. It was like a patch where it was just everybody would take Renekton and Leona bot lane and uh, Nami and Leona, and you just CC them to death. And there's nothing they could do. It was like season six or something. It wasn't that long ago. That sounds about right. I remember the uh, Doctor Mundo Vlad bot lane I saw every now and then. What? Because <laughs> they buffed. So it was it was one of the seasons that Vlad had just become like overpowered and moved to the bot lane, and they just buffed Mundo's Q. So at the time, like you took less damage from your Q, and it did a shit ton more damage to people. And so people took him in the bot lane because you just permanently slowed them with Mundo Q and Vlad's just spamming his Q. And so you're just shredding people. <laughs> Mundo got, got a really cool buff this patch. Uh, he is a lot worse in the jungle. As much as, as I was like, ah, he's not going to be that much worse. Losing 200 base damage on your Q makes that early clear really bad. <laughs> like, oh. ugh. We're, we're tackling this by pulling back on his clear speeds. And making it better to upload. Yeah, so now he kills people better, but he can't clear for shit. <laughs> yeah, actually, so bad. You're right. What the fuck? Like, I, I played against one Mundo, and it was. I don't remember who I was playing, but I have. A, usually, as a champion, I play that I have a terrible clear speed on. And against a Mundo, I was like, oh, he's going to be, like, full clear against me. We're going to get to this crab. I got to the crab, and I had three camps up on him. And I was like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> what? 
You should just play Wild Rift. Mundo's OP on Wild Rift. <laughs> Mundo's, Mundo's really strong right now anyways. Like, he's just... His clear speed just got nuked. Losing 200 base damage on your freaking Q is so abysmal. Like, since you talk about not having good mechanics, dude, you should just play Wild Rift. You don't need mechanics in Wild Rift. Uh, but I have to have fingers. I don't like using my fingers like that. No. You literally don't aim skill shots. But I don't have enough room on my phone. <laughs> I don't want to undownload Raid Shadow everything. Legends. <laughs> it's not actually on my phone. It's on my computer, but, you know. What is on my phone? I know I'm out of space on my phone. I just don't remember what's on it. Dude, I have so much space on my phone, and I feel like I downloaded so much random shit that I don't even play. I got the Jimmy Jones app. I can't get rid of that. Even though there's not a Jimmy Jones near my house, and I only had it for when I was going to a friend's house. I think we figured out your issue. <laughs> not gonna lie. Hey, you know what? I, I might need that Jimmy John's app in the future when a Jimmy John's gets built in range. You just you just install it then. <laughs> no, no, that's that's a lot of brain process then. That's a that would be a future dick problem, and I don't want to be in the future and be like, God damn it, past Nick. So, you know. Understandable. That <laughs> makes a lot of sense. I want to hate on other people from my past, not me. Right? I have enough. <laughs> I have enough already hate self hatred for previous iterations of me. Uh, I try to install every single video out of every single game and delete all my photos just so I can install Wild Rift and I haven't played it in like a week. Yeah, Goomba. You're supposed to play with me. I already got the gold. <laughs> it fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't even enjoy League, and it's just the worst mobile version of it. I'd rather play Mobile Legends. I'm trying to play Yasuo again. He's really hard to play. That was that was the most fun I had playing. You probably, you probably have to well, use the actual minion button, which is why he's hard. Yeah, and you have to aim your dash. You have to aim oh, some... Says you don't have to aim, and then just now says well, you have you to aim something. Have to aim. You can just tap it, but then it just goes to the closest one, which sometimes is the direction you want to go. I feel like that game is just unplayable unless you're on an iPad. Like, you just cannot be good unless you're on an iPad. No, you just play Oriana, dude. Oriana's fucking busted in that, in Wild Rift. Don't, don't worry, dude. I'm just gonna get a freaking, uh, what do you call it? I'm just gonna have a, a simulation of it on my freaking computer so I can play it from my PC. Just fucking play I don't think it actually, I don't think it actually would help that much. Dude, I then I can like... play with mouse and keyboard? Bam. No, they, they would specifically but you can't, like... But, yeah, I was gonna say, do they have keyboard and mouse support? Because if yeah, they don't... They really have mouse have... support, so you can just click, because that's how you click stuff, and it's just simulating touch, but you wouldn't be able to use a keyboard. Because otherwise, people would just... But I mean, like, you don't kill the minions by clicking on them, though. <laughs> no, but it's like... If you use your mouse, it's like you're touching the screen. So basically, you just... Wait, how do you kill the minions, then? You have an auto-attack button. Attack button. Yeah. I I don't I don't want to learn this. This sounds like a whole different layer of witchcraft I, that I don't want to get into. There's a button. Oh, so you just click attack. I don't like this. A minion, you click a minion attack. If you hit a tower, you hit a tower attack. I don't like this. Your abilities. It's already. I know it's very confusing. I don't like this at all. It's a lot more yeah. buttons than I normally have to press. All right. I don't think having a mouse and keyboard would help that much. If anything, it might actually make it harder. <laughs> so, Alright, uh, give me my Xbox controller, I'm coming. It might actually be better. If you want to play Mobile, or uh, whatever it's called, Wild Rift. On a mobile computer. Legends. Yeah, if you want to play Mobile Legends on a computer with a mouse and keyboard, there's a, there's a new kind of thing, it's, it's pretty unknown, it's called League of Legends. Um, You should install it and just give it a go. Is that anything like Heroes of New Earth, my favorite game? <laughs> Heroes of the Storm. Oh, no, no not Hot. Heroes of New Earth. <laughs> what is that? Han? No, Han is dead. Uh, Han was League of Legends competitor when League first came out. <laughs> uh, Here, let me send it to you. Wait, you... No, no. Heroes of New Earth is still alive. You Wait, it's still play. alive? You can still download it at least. The last time their site was updated was 2017, Sark. Uh, 
their site isn't updated doesn't mean it's not out. Yeah, here's a new Earth. No, it doesn't say that it's shut down. The Iron last Man? hero teaser was 2017. They haven't released a new character in four years. Uh, let's check the news. Yeah, that probably is the news. Yikes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the forums. Wait, I'm going to the forums. The last time the game was updated was three days ago. Wait, people are yeah, people are still posting well, in the forums of it. How is Han still alive? I thought it died. <laughs> uh, I think it like, got really popular in China like a year or two ago or something. I remember. Anyhow, Han was originally League's biggest competitor uh, before Dota 2 came out. And then Dota 2 really took over as being the big competitor and people kind of forgot about Han. At least over here and in Europe. It really fell off. Pace was insane. I never played Han, actually, back in the day. Because uh, there's too many things I had to keep track of, right? Like, I liked playing Smite. I liked playing League. Um, and I didn't know what the hell Dota was. Because I, even though I played Warcraft 3, I didn't play any of the modded shit because I didn't play online. I just played with myself. Against computers. And I was really bad. You know... I saw something recently, like that made me think about what you and Lindsay always said about me, and then I realized, you know, maybe it was a little accurate. Oh. Which is you guys talk about my micro and stuff, and then I watched these really old clips of me playing StarCraft, and I was like, you know, and that was like when I was washed up already, and my my fucking APM and like fucking uh, micro was pretty insane, and like my. Mouse click accuracy and everything, like just clicking between the units and stuff, and microing in fights. I was like, "Holy shit!" You and, you can't go back on it now, sir. So like, you've convinced me you have godlike neutral game. I'm not allowing you to go back and say now that you've godlike micro. No, no, I never said that. Either. I just meant I didn't realize how good it actually was. I didn't think it was that good, but then I was watching clips of when I was washed up already, and I was like, "Bro, what the fuck, like." I don't, I guess it's because I was so used to it that I didn't, it felt really slow to me. Because whenever I think of when I played StarCraft, I remember my, I had low APM for like a StarCraft player, which, but even then, like, even though my APM was low, I was just doing what was needed. I didn't do like a lot of extra stuff. But yeah, I was just watching my old like recordings and I was like, dude, I'm insane. Do you know how low know. my APM is, Sark? I play at, like, 150 APM, dude. All right? Like... Yeah, I only have, like, 140 in StarCraft, so... Wait, seriously? All right, like, I thought I had dog shit APM, but... Come on, buddy. I mean, when I first started, I was only doing 30, but... <laughs> when I stopped playing, I was at 150. That was my I peak. Have about... I used to have about 15 APM. There's no way you only have 15 APM. I just right click on them. Nah, I, I have no idea what my APM is. <laughs> you can get to 30 just by clicking in one spot on repeat. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, just well, so, oh, wait. I didn't copy it at the exact time. Oops. There's no way you only had 140. Here, let's watch. Yeah, I only had like 140. I remember because maybe like 160. But, oh, you played then, doubles. Oh, yeah, I told you. This is from... I recorded more when I was, like, washed up and just playing for fun. So this is when I was just practicing. Or, no, I was getting the achievements for playing uh, every race in, in ranked. What was your main? Protoss. Oh, okay, yeah, I was a Protoss player, too. But I loved I was, it. I Most constructed random. additional pylons got stuck in my ear a lot. Uh, I sucked at making is... sure I had enough pylons. The amount of I'm clicking and like moving around and stuff, I don't remember. You do like a lot. Like... Uh, well, well, you're clicking yeah. a lot. You're not doing a lot, but you're clicking a lot at least. Yeah. I mean, there's not much to do right now at the start. What are you talking, Zergling Rush, my dude? I was practicing this morning, so. And it's a 2v2, so it's harder to rush. I remember but me this... and my buddy used to play Halo Wars, and uh, all we did was rush. We both just spam an elephant and run it at our opponents. And just rush with marines. It's a terrible strat. 
but it worked a lot. We got way higher than we should have ever gotten. Yeah, that's not like... Doing speedlings like... and roaches. Yeah, I just... If I tried to play StarCraft today, doing all this would feel like so overwhelming. I don't think I could do this anymore. Yeah. To be honest, at this point, I think I probably have an APM of like 40. Exactly. Like, but then again, League doesn't have that much APM requirements. Which was funny, I got into an argument with an old StarCraft player probably like three months ago. And he was pissed because I was he's like, oh, I have this APM of 300. You know, and I, I lose to these shitters. And it's like, your APM doesn't matter in League, dude. Like, yeah, even in StarCraft, having 300 APM doesn't matter. <laughs> like, unless you're at, well, like, highest level and you can use that APM efficiently, it didn't matter. But, like, I was like, here in League, it doesn't even matter if you can get to 100 APM, really. Like, you don't have to have that many actions yeah. per minute. Like, there's, there's no point. There's... <laughs> And, he, and he's like, yeah, there is. There's totally a point. It means I can move around and adjust by clicking. I was like, no, it means you over-adjust. And it means you're going to end up actually making more mistakes, probably. And he just, like, went off. He was so fucking furious. And I was just like, all right, bud. Whatever. Enjoy your 300 APM. Like, I'm just going to go back over here and play CSGO at 4,400 DPI with 2.5 sensitivity. Leave me be. That still shocks a lot of people in the CSGO community that I play that high of freaking sensitivity. Sorry, what is it? It's 1,400 and what? Oh, not 1,400. 4,400. Oh, okay. 4,400 and... Uh, 2.5 sensitivity. Uh, I'm in pain. <laughs> it's like... It's like actually eight times my sensitivity. It's it's It makes Woxic look like he's, you know... <laughs> like he's a grandpa like Woxic being one of the highest <laughs> movement pros meanwhile I'm over here with just like a shit ton higher than any bro Woxic's like 1200 1.8 I think or something like that uh, he's got 1.5 at 1400 uh, okay slightly more yeah so I mean I'm, it, it's still oh, I'm 1200 1.2 so like it's yeah I play very low that's not pretty low. That's still really high. It's still pretty high, but like it's it's low considering like my DPI is that high because I play league, but I can't play league on fucking four hundred DPI. I can't either. Yeah, I play league at forty four. I can't. I can't play. I, I I can move down to thirty two in both, and I'm okay. But like, like when I want to get better at league, I I think I currently have it on thirty two. Uh, actually, I haven't checked my DPI in a while. Because I don't feel like having Razor Synapse open all the fucking time. Uh, I don't remember what my password is for fucking Razor Synapse. I'm pretty sure this is the password, but apparently it is not. Alright. Oh, it was. Okay, it just didn't register it. Thanks, Razor. Let me see. What is my current DPI? Uh, yeah, I've actually been watching StarCraft a lot more recently. I guess that's one thing new. I randomly found a really good highlight channel of all the recent stuff, and then it, it had me actually enjoying... I haven't watched much since, like, 2011. Uh, I currently am sitting at 3,600. Jesus Christ. That's just my static every day. This is what I use. My mother tries to use my mouse, and she just, like, stares at it. She doesn't understand what the hell to do with it. She's like, how can you, how can you function? And I was like, oh, just like this. And, like, I, I literally can move maybe about a, about a centimeter uh, using just my thumb and my uh, ring finger, and I can move it around the entire screen in less than less than the time of thought. That's that's insane. I it, it has its benefits, and it definitely has its negatives. In shooters, it definitely has some negatives. <laughs> its benefit is that I can turn around and get some sick ass flicks that nobody ever sees coming. Negative is somebody comes around the corner and I don't see them, and then I see them, I get scared to shit, and I spin and do a fucking 720. Yeah. 
The thing is, when you spin, you spin three times and then turn around and shoot them. I just, like, I just turn around. Yeah, one dude actually scared the crap out of me, missed his shot, and I did the 720, he's like, and it scared him. Like, he was just like, what the fuck just happened? And I got, I actually got my bearings and was able to turn around and shoot him. And he's like, what had just happened with you? I was like, you scared me. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, most of my teammates will see it too, and then they're just like, what the fuck just happened there, buddy? Are you okay? It's like, ah, it's the downside of 4400 DPI. And then they all shit themselves. They're like, what? I play at 400. How are you? It's like, all right, calm down. It's fine. But, uh. So, wait, why are you watching more StarCraft, Sark? Let's go back to that. What, uh, what, what has, what has made you do this? Oh, I found, I had, like, suggested a random highlight channel, and then I watched it, and the gameplay was actually pretty fun to watch, and then I was like, Let's see if there's more good videos on this channel, and there are a bunch of really good ones. There's actually a guy who used this strat that I did way back in the day on ladder that mm -hmm. I thought of that uh that he used in a pro game, but it didn't work the exact same way because the game's so different now. But it was like the same concept of an idea, which is like because in PvP, a lot of people cannon rush. Mm -hmm. He did a fake cannon rush by not building anything in his base, but he built all his units outside his base. I mean, not his units, his buildings outside his base. And then in PvP, like, the biggest thing is whoever finishes Warp Gate first gets a huge advantage. And back when I played, the huge advantage would be enough for you just to win, like, straight up win. And you'd win off, like, the first two warps because you'd have one warp before he, before his first one. And so, but since the game's, like, a little more slow-paced now, or less, like, all in -y, he, like, it was the same thing, except that instead of straight up winning, he uh, he just got a really big advantage, and then he won like five minutes later. But basically, when you go into a, a person's base in PvP and you don't see any buildings, you assume they're either proxying you, or or cannon rushing you. So then they're either gonna rea they're gonna react most likely with a forge, instead of putting their gateway down immediately, and that's what the other guy did. And since you put down a forge first instead of a gateway, you just get your warp gate tech slower. And so you just win the game by by having your warp gate finish first because you didn't put down it. You didn't cannon rush them. You just did a normal build. You just hit your buildings in a random place on the map. Because mm. yeah. I used to do it because, like, when I played PvP back on, I literally would forge gate every game and then I just click on his gateway to see who started first. And if mine was starting first, then I knew that I'd, I'd wait. I was having the advantage, you know? Assuming that I didn't screw anything up and put every building down as soon as I could and started the warp gate as soon as I could, that I would I would win the game or have a huge advantage because I'd warp in the first set of units. But, um, but yeah, he, so one of the times what I did was instead of building my gateway inside my base, I just built it off to the side and, like, one of the side bases hidden. And so he thought I was cannon rushing, and he put down a forge, and then when I didn't cannon rush, then he was just like, oh, I'm fucked. That's that's really smart. I've never thought of doing that, but then again, I always just cannon rush somebody, because uh, it's a cheese strat that easily gets you to gold elo in StarCraft. Like, just... Dude, people still do it at, like, really high ranks when I was playing. Oh, I you could it. just sneak a win with it. <laughs> it's... Well, like... Because some of the maps were so fucked, like Zelnaga Caverns, you would get cannon rush like every other game in PvP. Because if you spawned on the top half, you could wall yourself in with the cannons behind the mineral line. That's so like, I actually got so mad at someone who did it to me that I just started doing it like every game for a while. And it worked, because like, cause you only had to put a cannon on like one side to like wall yourself in. Did you ever do the uh, the strat where you, go, you rush... Uh... You rush your uh, resource management so you can start getting faster resources so you have more of your freaking little, like, probes. And then you send probes over to start putting warp gates to lock in your opponent. I'm lost. So mm -hmm. what you would do is you, you, you use your bit of first bit of money to make more probes, to max out your probes, to then and then you send, like, three probes to hide near the enemy base. So they go to your base, they think you're turret rushing, so they're doing counter strat for a turret rush. And then you just make... Uh, like three warp gates in front of like the entrance to their base 
so that as they're like building their stuff, they then realize there's work case there and you start building your units right at their base. So they can't so to get out, they have to one kill your units and then kill those warp gates as well. It doesn't it worked for me twice. It was just <laughs> such a funny dumb strat that had Right, not warp gates. They turn into uh, warp gates after. Not, yeah, not warp gates, but yeah, 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 the base ones, you, it, the the basic ones. Um, yeah. but yeah, and then like behind it, all you just start doing is just doing shield batteries behind it, so it takes fucking forever for them to actually destroy it. Oh wait, no, no, no. Okay, I didn't play during this. That's why. Oh. <laughs> I played the Liberty. There wasn't a shield battery or anything. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So. Do <laughs> you have that stuff? Yeah, that was three years ago when I was playing it, and uh, it, and so yeah, so you you just run in there and like you just put some sneaky pylons right next to like if you got a map where there's like a ramp leading to their base, you could do this super easily, and you just put the sneaky pylons at the edge of the ramps, and then like they send out their scout probe, and you just kind of hide and wait, and then you just start building uh, gates there, and then you put shield batteries like seven shield batteries behind them, so. So it just takes like 10 years to destroy these things. So you're sitting there just building all your shit up while they're trying to get out of their base because half the time they didn't use air units because uh, rushing air units could get really countered really fast. So um, one time it backfired because it was like my third game and I'd lo I'd watched uh, Winter. Uh, I can't remember Winter's full like handle, but he's a, he's a dude that teaches... Or yeah, so he he was teaching strats, and this was one of the cheese strats he shot he taught with Protoss. Um, I didn't watch the episode where he told you not to do it against uh fucking Terran, and I didn't know why he didn't say to do it against Terran. Uh, problem: Terran can just pick up their base and fly away, so they don't care. It's like ah fuck me, <laughs> like they just upgrade so their base is shooting your shit, and so they just don't care. And it's like oh that sucks. <laughs> Um, but it, it, I, I contained a Zergling rush that way because my probes could just build new shield batteries faster than he could destroy the shields. <laughs> so he was just permanently trapped there trying to Zergling rush me. Yeah, if you ever play StarCraft again, let me know. Maybe I'll try it out again too. I'd totally be down. I, I, I've been wanting to have another game to play on the side. I've been playing so much only like League, occasionally get on Raid just to have a have something else and then some hearthstone and other than that that's all i've been doing recently so i'm giving on any other games other than valorant and league if you're still there uh we bored him away with our starcraft doc oh <laughs> I, don't know, I was just, I was just thinking. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, probably won't ever give it a try, but if I do, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Oh uh, no, I meant. Have you been playing anything else though, like, oh. other than League and Valorant? Oh, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> what about that Bloons Tower Defense Six grind? No. No. But during listening to you guys, it was very confusing. So I, I came up with a question based on confusion. Yes. Like about League. If you guys are done talking about StarCraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm done. Okay. So um, I didn't know what Skarner fully did. Still kind of don't till about Season 8. Is there any or any characters that were in the game for a long time that you just had no fucking idea what they did? No. I learned recently, even though I play Lisa all the time, <laughs> That when you shield a warrior or a minion, it doesn't give you a shield anymore. You just learned. Okay. Dude, that's been out of the game for like five seasons. Okay, okay, so when they patched that out, what I thought it meant was you no longer ward the minion, or you no longer shield the minion or the ward. I didn't know it meant that you no longer shield yourself either. So, like, I noticed it the other day when I was, like, getting killed and I ward hopped away and then I didn't shield at all. And I was like, wait a sec. Does my shield like not shield me at all anymore either when I ward off? And then I tried it again, and I was like, "How did I never notice this?" This makes me lose so much trust in your like explanations for things that you do, just because this is a champion you have been playing so much since that has happened, I mean, and I you you are making plays thinking that you still have the shield. <laughs> I, mean, I never max it, and most of the time the shield doesn't matter, so I don't even notice it anymore. I guess, but. <laughs> Um, 
so like in terms of like confusion of not fully understanding a champion i haven't had that in a while but that's also because like after i owned all champions at the end of like season four i made a memo to myself to like learn the basic at least the basics of each champion i can't play every champion for dog shit like like how to make champions work is my biggest problem like i understand all of the concepts of their abilities but like nidalee i don't fucking understand how people are good with this champion like i know all of her abilities i know how all of them are supposed to synergize i have the premise of what you're supposed to do on her but anytime i jump in with my empowered freaking attacks i feel like i'm just fucking scratching on a wall like it doesn't i don't do anything like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, she can't that's she kind used of to like, you just have to weaken the wall first. Yeah, okay, yeah, I throw a, a fucking spear at the wall, and then apparently my cat paws are supposed to just destroy it, but, like... Exactly. It, it doesn't seem to work that way for me. I'll hit them with the spear, and it's like, it's, oh, their HP's gone, and then I jump in, and, like, nothing well, happens. It's, it's pretty common, but, uh, it's a pretty uncommon knowledge, but Nidalee actually does more damage the higher your LP. So just oh, to okay. there, I guess. I uh, got it, got it. Yeah, I just need to be diamond before I can figure out how to unlock this champion, apparently. At least, yeah. yeah. She's not as good as she used to be. That's a big thing, too. <laughs> Darth Nurse oh. said that she doesn't have the Morgana Q projectile anymore. Oh, yeah, that too. No, but before, you used to like not have to worry about when you went in because you were just so strong. God. But now like you have to pick it really well. Like either, And you need to build Zonias. That's a really key thing, too. I kind of want to go back to the day where you only did Spear Chunk in Italy. Like, you didn't play, you didn't go to Cougar form ever. Oh. You literally just used Cougar to get around faster. In the wave season, like, you could land a Q, and then you could hop on them and kill them. So it wouldn't matter. Like, you wouldn't have to think about, well, like, if I jump into them and I don't kill them, then how do I, like, react to the play? Because when you jumped in, they just died <laughs> in, in, like, season five in Italy. But now, like, most of the time, if you only land one spear, you're not going to kill the person. Unless it's a really early game. And you you got to leave. Now, like, you have to land a spear, and then when you go in, it has to be a trade, and you have to get out. You have to know that, like, they can't CC you, or how strong their damage is going to be in return. Whereas before, there would be no return damage, because they'd just be dead. <laughs> so they would not be alive. Yeah. <laughs> That's why... I I was kind of okay with playing Gragas because you can cancel her jump, which in turn cancels her Q, and then you can try and one-shot her in that time. But yeah, you know, I usually didn't make it to that point because they would W towards me, flash my ability, uh, then prove, and then like link their challenger OPGG after the game, and it just outplayed the shit out of me. I, uh, when you see level 30 Nidalee in like silver, you just ult for the game. It's just over. You just lost. At least that's how it used to be. You just don't see Nidalee. I remember when I played her a lot in like season five or whatever, she was really strong. There literally wasn't a game that I didn't feel like I could lose. Or that I couldn't like come back in. Because I was just that strong where I could like solo kill a team by myself. Were you uh like a themes Nidalee? No, no, no. No, season I... five. <laughs> this is full damage. I'm gonna kill you in one shot in the league. Yeah, you're in wave. That was like the the Sheen item that was AP in the jungle. Yeah, the wasn't that Rune Glaive? Yeah, that's Rune Glaive. You'd you'd land a Q and then you'd like one shot whoever you were you jumped on and landed the Q on, and then you'd leap away because it would reset your W, and yeah. you just do that four times. And... It was atrocious, is what it was. It was a fucking abomination. It was actually so point, strong. At this point, the seasons are blending together. I don't really know. <laughs> Try playing it for yeah. 11 seasons. <laughs> yeah. well, I only remember Nidalee that season because I was like, when she was at her peak, where she was like ridiculously OP. Seasons 1 through 3 are all a blur to me. I don't remember exactly. Like, even up to season 4, like, I can't differentiate when certain things happened. Like, especially season 3 and season 4, I get so many things between those two seasons mixed up now. Like, I'll be like, oh, I remember this happening there. And then somebody's like, that happened in season 4. It's like, Oh fuck me! <laughs> like, season season five and six just they just blend together for me. I don't. The change was like the dragons. That was it, right? Nope, those ADC changes. I know that I can differentiate those two seasons predominantly because that was the time I became the most mad at Riot. <laughs> they killed my entire ADC pool. Graves went to the jungle. Quirky went to mid. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ergot was on the verge of becoming a freaking bruiser, like. They just killed my whole ADC pool in those two seasons. Like, they just destroyed it. 
Lucian was nerfed out of existence. Like, it was just, it sucked. <laughs> I remember season three, because I still play Lady Carry. And I'm looking through each season to see what I remember. Dude, Lucian, when he first came out, I played him, and like the patch he came out, everybody's like, he's so bad. He's so terrible. Why are you touching the champion? And then it was just like, like he then hit like one one game in pro play, and like the next pass, he immediately got nerfed because they realized, oh god, this champion is disgustingly broken. Like it was, it was just like, oh yeah, your Q can hit somebody from almost the entire lane away. <laughs> oh what the hell? I was eight and five on ribbon one season. All right, season four was the season that Ziggs was broken. I forgot about that. Season five was when I played Nidalee and Gragas with her in Glaive. Let's see. And then after that, I just didn't care because I got Diamond. Yeah. Let's see. Season, season three was my brand main season, I think, but it's no longer on OP.GG for whatever reason. Okay. Um, my OP still has my season three stats. It doesn't have my season three or my season two anymore. I don't know why. I don't have my two season two stats. I'm actually oh. so upset that I didn't play a single ranked game in like season five because it's just. I just I just stayed away from ranked for like an entire year and a half after I started the game. So there's no evidence that I ever even played back then. There are my Trundle my, games. This is my OG like games in match history. I was eight and eight on Lee Sin back then? What the hell? Did you have a different name before Little Goomba Goomba? Yeah, I had an old account. Oh, okay. So that account has always been named Little Goomba? Uh no. This one was like I made it just after I um like just after i got banned so like i called it like something like mute all or something like that i don't know oh, and i changed that, it to Lil, Lil monkey because my friend's name is big monkey and then i <laughs> started calling people goombas from someone from work and then i just changed my name to little goomba and i don't ever <laughs> want to change it again it's perfect i had some serious win rates in season five what the fuck why was i is this the first season i made plat was that the season where you were p1 no season so season five yeah so season five was the one that I got flat and then I uh then I demoted out of flat just because uh being an idiot um what, and I was oh pissed. My God, gold four. Uh, when you were, you went down to gold four holy shit. yeah I tilted so hard that season because like I actually like made it all the way to plat and I only stayed in plat for like three games um and at that time like one of my friends had made it to plat and I was trying to prove he wasn't better than me. Uh, that being said, I couldn't farm oh. as Gragas for whatever reason, but it was also the season like I was becoming super dedicated to becoming a Graves Lucian tri one trick. Um, I also played Sigs a lot. It's never a good thing to play rank, dude. And then season know. six was the one that I demoted out of plat because my computer broke. Um, oh, blaming the computer. No, seriously, the last four. <laughs> that was the one I got. That was the one I was plat one. Uh, I got plat oh, one that season, and my I computer did. broke for the last like five season, uh, five months of the season, and yeah, I couldn't afford to buy it. It disappeared. I remember that. Yeah, that was the end yeah. of season six, and that would have been the one yeah. I was going to create crest through diamond. And I was so pissed. He got plat one, and then he just disappeared, and then, and then randomly when he came back, he wasn't plat one anymore, and I was like, wait, okay, I guess. Yeah, I got back to Plat that next season, but all I played was Jin. Like, the next season literally was Jin was my main. I played uh, 296 games on Jin. The next closest was Gragas at 68. I played Gragas a lot more than I thought. I never knew that. I played Gragas in Season 2. Oh, season 3. Season 3 was the first season I picked him up yeah. because I was a brand mid main, and my friend was like, try Gragas, he's kind of broken. And then I played him, and I was like, oh, he's so much fun. So the next season, I mained Gragas. Um, and then I moved to ADC. Like, ADC was always my secondary, but I started maining ADC that season because I really liked Ezreal. Um, and I had a really good win rate season four on Ezreal. I was 41 and 27 with a 3.5 KDA. 3.57. What season is this? Season four. Like, I actually had a really good win rate in KDA on Ezreal. I did play Ezreal pretty well. Damn. I played Corky pretty well back then. Like, I was actually surprisingly good on quite a few ADCs back then. And then uh, Season 5 rolled around. That's where I mained Lucian for a while, but he kept going in and out of being good or not. Uh, Graves was the, the one that I was really good on that season. I had a really rough season for Gragas that season. I did pretty damn well on Trundle, and that was, like, the first season, like, I was... 
I'd played Trundle a lot up until that point, but that was like the first season like I played anything other than ADC or mid um, consistently. Uh, Corky was one of my mains. Ziggs was one that carried over from my mid days down to ADC. Um, I did pretty well that season. Season six is where Jin got released and they killed all my other ADCs. So I played a lot of Jin. <laughs> um, I played a couple of tanks at that time because I still liked Maokai. And then the next season I played nothing but Jin. And then the next season I played a lot of Jin and kind of slowed down playing in season eight. Um, let me see, when was season eight? Season eight was three seasons ago. I don't remember why I slid down in season eight. I just didn't play as much. And in season nine, I played the least out of any rank season that I played. Um, and that was because for like, I was dating somebody very seriously for like three months in that season. And then the next season was last season and I played way too many games. If dating someone restricts your gameplay, that, that's an issue. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, you'd think that, right? Uh, except for like that season, I was already kind of getting bored of League a little bit, so I was already tuning down how much I was playing it. Um, and then I got to date somebody who I really liked, and so it was just an excuse to not play League of Legends. And then when we broke up, and I was devastated, uh, the first month or so I didn't play any League, and then the month after that, I played nothing but League. <laughs> I see you. Back on so, my drug all over again. I'm playing it was like a rebound. Games. The rebound that stuck around. Yep. Only had a couple of seasons where I didn't, like, that I had breaks in them. And, yeah, I've only had two big breaks in League. Three, uh, three and a half, about a four-month period, uh, which was Season uh, 9. And then a that giant five-month period that was Season uh, 6. But... I also had a shit ton of games already made in season six. Like I had an ungodly amount of games in that season. Ugh. I'm still so upset that I've never made it back to plat one since that day. It's been one of the biggest problems mentally I think I've ever had. It's one of the biggest mental blocks of wanting to get back there and just not being able to. Feels good, man. Don't worry. Now you can play Rumble and get it. Yeah, now I can play Rumble. Dude, I actually had a good game on Lilia last night. Like, a really good game. It started off really abysmally, and then turned into a really good game. That's good. Uh, yeah. It's tails right now. Heads. I'll be right back, though. You gonna use All the right. bathroom? We're flipping a coin. If this is heads, I'm gonna commit to playing ranked this season and hit plat. If it's tails, I'm never playing League again. Oh, uh, your team's gonna be upset about that. Except for that. Oh, fuck, it's Tails. All right, we're, we ain't we're going to play next season. I don't know. I just... Rank just sucks. Rank can suck very bad. I... Like, I also, like, have a new motivation for wanting to go pro. Like, my previous motivations were the fact that I've just always had that aspiration to want to be a pro. Um... But I've never actively applied myself in a serious enough manner other than the one season that I was OTPing Jin um, to, to actually improve. And I think in the last couple of seasons, I've improved greatly at jungle. But I mean, I basically started over square one and have to, in a, each season, I have to relearn the role, uh, which is, I guess, playing it on hard mode a little bit. Um, <laughs> but which, like. Which... Which season was it that you played Jin? It was... So I started season six when he was released, and I played him all the way through season nine as my main. Okay. That's that's a while. Holy shit. Yeah, for four seasons I played Jin as my main. And I love Jin. I still can I can still go back to Jin and beat a lot of ADCs. That's that, that that part of it, I think, is kind of ridiculous. That he's one of those champions I can just come back to now. And I can get back to about a 50-something percent win rate on him pretty consistently again. Like, in a, uh, last, last season was not a good season. It was my worst season on Jin I've ever had. But he was also one of the singular worst ADCs in the meta. But like season season nine, he wasn't really a good ADC. Kept a fifty four percent win rate. Uh, season eight, he really wasn't a good ADC. Had a fifty eight percent win rate. Season seven, fifty five percent. Season six, fifty four percent. 
Like, he's he was decent at the start of this season, but like he's been rough for a couple a while since like season six. Amber. I think people just play him wrong. Like legitimately, when I watch people play, I'm like, you're just not playing him correctly. And one of my friends got mad at me because he's an AD main. He's like, you don't even main ADC. I was like, all right, play me. And so we played in uh, custom games the other night. Or not the other night, about two weeks ago now. Um, and we played, and I played Jin, And uh, I smoked him, like, obscenely hard. And he's like, how can you make Jin do that? And I was like, and he's like, you started Doran's ring. Why the hell does that work? I was like, oh, well, your Q has an AP ratio. Um, you like to spam your abilities to be able to beat people up. So guess what Doran's ring does? It gives you mana back when you kill minions. Guess how that synergizes with your Q? As you kill minions with your Q, it makes it do more damage. So as it does more damage and it hits somebody, you get <laughs> shut tons of mana back and chunk somebody for almost all of their HP. Then I don't have yeah. to focus about positioning to auto you. Legitimately, Jin is a long-range beat-you-up champion. People just don't play him that way. And then you can play him very aggressively once you start getting a small HP lead. Um, and it's just, it's one of those, he's a lane bully from hell. And people don't play him as lane bully half the time. Like, it's its so shocking to me. Like, I've played I've played against so many gens that play so passively. And it's like, you are, you are skewering what this champion is good at. <laughs> like, he's so good at being a lane bully. And people just don't do it. And it bugs me. It bugs the living shit out of me now. Like, when I see it. Good God, I have that many mastery score on him? What the fuck? Is it still your highest? Uh, Jin is still my highest, yeah. I'm at uh, 585,000. It's not that bad. Uh, then the next is Greg is at 336. Yeah. Trundle at 283. Skarner at 226. Well, Kimba, your Rivens is so high. Why don't I see you play Riven more? It's 500. That was one season. Wait, I don't have Goomba added. What's your IGN, Goomba? Uh, it's little Goomba. Is it all one word? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Spaces don't matter. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. Uh, that was it. Yeah, it was literally one season. Um, yeah, season nine, I played uh, about five hundred games of Riven, and then I guess in this one I played sixty, but like that doesn't really matter. Jesus. I liked Riven. Um, yeah, I got I got pretty good, but I mean Gragas, I've I played a lot. I have I've calculated it before, but it was like around eight hundred thousand or so over accounts. Uh, eight hundred thousand on Gragas, so I mean he's definitely my most played, but I I play a lot of League. I don't know. So, how many of you have uh, eternal progression of 480 or above on a champion? No. Zion is 131. That's my highest. I have 480 on Volley Bear. <laughs> on Volley Bear? I don't know how I managed that. Wait, where do you see the progression on it? Uh, you just look at the big number where the little flame is. Yeah, just in collection. Like, I have 399 on Skarner, 183 on Trundle, 115 on Gragas. My Volley Bear from this season alone, 480. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, I just pop off on that champion. What are the, oh, okay. what are the things? I mean, look at the things. They must be easy to get or something. Wait, what's All you your can high? eat. All you can eat. Total healing received from your W. So that one's kind of easy to get. Yeah. Bear breaks, uh, hits champion with majestic roar while airborne. So landing your E while airborne. Uh, enemies champions killed with Stormbreaker. Oh, this is where I'm getting a lot of the points. I'm already onto the third, <laughs> onto the third stage of this one, killing somebody with your R. Oh. <laughs> uh, munches enemy champions killed with frenzy W. Wait, how do you tell when you're on the third stage of it? Uh, so it, it it will start doing a little progression on there, so like this one has it it already has two of them filled up, so it's on the third one on it. Huh. Sometimes sometimes they'll have it, but it's uh until you reach uh you have to reach up to f it's I'm only on milestone two, so I finished milestone two. I'm heading for milestone three, so like let's see I haven't gotten milestones on bear breaks yet, but I'm on seven milestones for, uh for uh, all you can eat but i mean on scion i've passed 27 milestones on my queue 
33 on my W, uh, ah. 27 takedowns. How do... I was wrong. Here's There's one more at the bottom I didn't see. Thunder and Lightning. Enemy champions damaged by Sky Splitter E while stunned by Thundering Smash. That, yep, that's... 445 milestones. We figured out where the stats are coming from. That's it. <laughs> so, like, the Why other one... So, so, the other ones... Uh, so, like, Bear Breaks, Munches, and Set by, uh, Before Spike are his old ones before he got reworked. And I only got the milestone... Uh, I didn't even get the milestone one on Bear Breaks. But then, on his other ones, I have seven milestones on one, two on another... 445 on the third <laughs> okay I, w I was so confused like how this this math does add up for like 10 times your milestones and then there's one with 400 enemy champions damaged by sky splitter while stunned by q that's such an easy one to achieve no fucking wonder i've passed that an obscene amount of times the men are all so low wait you get there's eight or there's, there's there, so there's six of them there because there's three of them that you can only get on the old Foley Bear before oh, he got reworked. So they just kept it. Yeah, but you can't get them anymore. <laughs> so they're just legacied. So do you um do you have like two, three things on your mastery then? If you have all of them? So I got for the old ones, I didn't get a single milestone from the old ones. Okay. I'm just wondering because, like, when you get the when you complete the Eternals for two of them, right? You get two points above your two tallies above your Mastery Seven. Yeah. Like, I'm wondering if you had beat all of them, would you have three? So I have the starter series ones. I maybe I don't know. That would actually be kind of neat. But it looks like I should have at least one tally. Right? No, 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 no. I still have one more Eternal. I still have to destroy a few more structures with Volley Bear, and then I'll get one tally. Um, my trundle has both tallies though. I got thirty one for 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 one of them, twenty eight for another, twenty one for another. Oh wait, okay. Yeah. My scarner has three hundred ninety nine fucking points. Jesus Christ, dude. Dude, when you said milestones passed, I thought you meant like the number. <laughs> Not like the total number, but the number where it says milestones passed, that you had like 4,000. I was like, how is that possible? No, I only have 500, basically. <laughs> you just stole a lot. I don't, I don't play one champ, and I don't even play this game enough to do that. And a lot of the times I, when I'm playing, I'm playing custom, so I don't get any eternals for it. That's fair. I play a lot. I play way too much. So I get a lot of these eternal shit, and... I could honestly care less about the Eternals, to be honest, in the end. I just like having those two little dashes to show people I play a champion too much. <laughs> and I have it on Trundle and Skarner and Gragas and Jin. And I think maybe I might have it on Urgot. I don't know if I have it on oh, Urgot. I have 787 milestones. You're talking about that number. <gasps> oh, I don't have it on Jin. Oh, I have to get it on Jin. Wait, so Dude, like I, 700 milestones fast? Yeah, I thought, okay, when you were saying that, I thought he meant, like, on one champion. No, I was talking about one champion. I have, uh, I have 480 on Volley Bear. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah only if you're talking about milestones fast, I have 2042. Damn. <laughs> Do you have, like, all Eternals for all characters? Yeah, when it came out, yeah. I bought it. I just bought it. I was like, I play enough champions that I want it for at least... Oh, wait. I wanted I it for the... six of them, and I was like, I might as well just buy all of them at that point. I don't have the Series 1 set, though. I only have the starter series. I had the the series one that you one for, for, like, a few of my mains. I got the Series 2, but that's it. I only I... have 475 miles on the past total, so... I have the Series 1 for everybody, and I have the starter, of course, on everybody, so... <laughs> might as well. Oh, Oh, you have so many more. It includes your series one. Yes. Yeah, I only have the starter series. Okay, and you still have like seven hundred. That's insane. You play this game too much. What are you talking about? Most uh, most of my, I have almost three hundred from the starter series just from Skarner. Yeah, my highest is fifty five on one champion. From the starter series. Yeah, Skarner's is two forty four on the starter series, and then one fifty five from the series one. I like Skarner. 
when you said you didn't understand Skarner, it made me sad. I was like, oh, that's one of my favorite champions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am the series one for Skarner. <laughs> I don't have any milestones down there. Uh, there was something I was going to ask after one of Goomba's questions, because I liked his question and I had another question. I've asked one question, so I can go back to that. Somebody you didn't understand. I was going to ask Dude, something I along that line. I just oh, don't remember that, what it was. That reminds me. I still have no fucking idea what old Mordekaiser did. Which which iteration of old Mordekaiser? I got, like, Mordekaiser when I played, uh, pre- or after ADC rework. Juggernaut rework? The Juggernaut Mordekaiser? Okay. I just, I never... So I, that I champion was know. dumb. It just, <laughs> it, so, it just was cancer. So the reason that champion was broken was because you got to go into lane with a partner, and then you get 100% XP. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I knew why he was op i knew like that about it and then I your your q really was a ranged damage it. dealing ability your yeah. e was oh no no your q was ace of spades where you get to auto somebody really hard your e was the like i throw spades at you weird shit and then your w allowed you and one other person to be kind of pseudo shielded and then you guys get movement speed going at each other and that shield when you get near enemies starts spiraling and doing damage kind of like his current passive the thing is I actually knew exactly how his kit worked. I just didn't understand how people would one shot me and heal all of their health back. When I would when I would play him, I would heal like one health and do like half their health. I would just do no damage. I just didn't really understand how he worked together at all. I just don't understand. I played a lot of that Kaiser. I enjoyed killing dragons and shit. It was fun. Yeah, you could have a pet. That was cool. Uh, what is this ult two doing that again? Uh, so his ult did a down tick amount of damage on somebody, and if you killed them while it was still active, you get a clone of that person walking around oh, with you. Oh, okay. wait, so that was the same as the original, right? Yeah, exception okay. is that whenever you went and attacked dragons, it automatically procked it on them without you using your R, and if you killed the dragon, you got a dragon that walked around with you. I remember that. That was dumb. I don't know why they thought that was a smart idea. It was disgustingly broken. <laughs> Wouldn't you just, like, win the game in 20 minutes when it first got reworked? Yeah, yeah, because you, you just basically had a buffed Rift Herald <laughs> taking ta towers. Yeah, it was stupidly OP. You get a Rylai's and your dragon at range is keeping people from moving. And what did the really old Mordekaiser do? Really old Mordekaiser. So going back to the original Mordekaiser, did the exact same shits that I mentioned, except your W didn't go on other people. It was just a spiraling thing of death around you. It didn't speed you up, and it just it didn't do almost shit for damage. Wait, um, was your Q still in a powered auto or whatever? Yep, Q was still Ace of Spades. Uh, I did the one, two, three on the third hit. It hurt, hurt people. Um. And then your E was still that throw the roll the spades yeah, dice bullshit. The little thing that comes up from under the ground. Yeah. Or you know what? No, no, no. Original Q wasn't a three hit auto though. It was just an empowered auto on the first hit, but it did a lot. Um, oh yeah, okay. But it was on a much it, lower cooldown. It looked really dumb. I remember. Yeah, but it was on a much lower cooldown than it was on the second iteration, because you only got one extra auto with it. It was it was stupid. It made no sense. And then your ulti was the same. And the strat with Mordekaiser back in the day, because I played it, because I was a fucking moron. <laughs> and it was, you fucking int to your opponent for like three kills in a row while soaking up as much XP as you can in the process. You get to level six, you ulti your opponent and one shot them with your E and your Q. And then they're dead and now you have a really fed opponent to help kill you, kill the enemy tower. <laughs> it, was, it was such a dumb strategy and it won me so many fucking games because of it. It's just like, I inch you into having you on my team. <laughs> That's when he, um, he used to, like, he used to start 13 health pots or whatever, right? Until I <laughs> yeah, you start with the fucking maxed out health pots. Oh, it was so dumb. Uh, yeah, but there used to not be a limit on how many health pots you could buy. And they costed 35 gold instead of 50, and there used to be champions that would just start health pots. Yep. You also had like 375 gold at the time, though. It wasn't 500. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. so they upped it. Oh, yeah. They upped it when they upped the pot health, uh, the pot amount. They also, <laughs> when they gave you 500, they then added the original elixirs, or the better versions of the original elixirs. So you could start with the elixir, go into mm -hmm. lane, you don't drink it, you wait till you get to your opponent. Um, you start getting them kind of low, and you're like, I can win this. You drink the elixir, and then they can't kill you ever, and you get a shit ton of stats to kill them with. <laughs> no, no, dude. The cheese was, was like, 
You get level two first, then you pop the elixir. There you go. Yeah. It, it was just some weird shit. I don't know. It was some weird potion kind of thing. Yeah. I I remember Jax was the first champion I tried to main because I saw Dyrus smack in a tower. And I remember you build a crystalline flask, two mana pots, and like a couple health pots. And you'd just have so much fucking health. And then every time I'd play against Fiora, I'd build a cloth armor and uh, five pots. And just be a little bitch. Dude, yeah. Crystalline Flask, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. I kind of completely forgot about that item. I called it Crystalline Flask, like, for years, and I only recently switched to Corrupting Pot, because everyone kept getting mad at me. But, I, Crystalline Flask is a better name. So, like, people get, like, they're like, people tell me I'm a fake old player, because I now call Pink Wards Red Wards. Because they've been Red Wards for so many seasons now, I just stopped calling them Pink Wards. Because also, pink wards were completely different. They were invisible, and they revealed shit. Like, it was a completely different ward. <laughs> I know people who literally didn't even play the game back when it was uh, pink wards, and they call it pink wards, so... I blame pink ward for that. Yeah, let's go call it pink yeah wards. that's true. Uh, you know, you know, the thing I actively miss from back in the day was Oracle's Elixir. Oh, that was such a busted ass a fucking elixir. So dumb. So dumb. Five minutes of you can just see invisible shit. It's still on A run. It's, it's so dumb. It's, it, I don't know, like, why people didn't drink it more, like, to be honest. Like, even at high elo stuff, like, the best teams were the ones that used oracles. Like, <laughs> you know how dumb that is? <laughs> How that can that determined like in season three? That's why the Korean outside of the other things that Koreans did well. That was one of the reasons the Koreans were the best is they could control vision better because they drank fucking elixirs. Are you shitting me? Like why was that a thing that determined that helped determine that they were just that much better at vision control? Is that they knew that they could buy a fucking two hundred fifty gold item or whatever it was, like. It's in there. It's easy as shit to read. You know what it does. They're using it against you. Use it against them. Fucking nobody did it. Like, so dumb. So dumb. Ugh, there's, there's so many stupid things. Like, looking back at old League and being like, why are the pros that dumb? Like, how, how do you, like, after we've had this many years of analyst and shit, and I've watched so many videos of people bringing out content... I just completely forget about how stupid we were back in the older days of League. Like, how much we just didn't think about anything. Like, there were busted as shit items back then that nobody fucking used because there was other items that were just way more busted. Sword of the Occult. <laughs> Sword of the Occult was disgusting. Nobody ever used it except for Rengars. And then they one-shot everybody. It's fucking Sword of the Occult, Medjai, Zakali. <laughs> just have... So much AD and AP at the same time. There was an item, Avarice Blade. You just passively gained gold and gave you stats. Like, yeah, yeah. it was so dumb. You know how stupid that is on an assassin? You're just like, ah, yeah, I get the stats to kill you, and I just gained gold for having it. Like, <laughs> what? Why was that an item? I missed the item. I honestly really missed that item. I'd abuse the shit out of it right now. Or Heart of Gold. Give me that back. I'd love that item back. Uh... But then there was like stuff like Ohm Wrecker. I like, mean, it's not that broken because the enemy can just build it too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that stops it. But I mean, that goes back to why Elixir, uh, Oracle Elixir was broken, right? The enemy could just buy it too, but nobody fucking did. <laughs> there, still, there still is Ohm Wrecker in the game. There's Ohm Wrecker, Yumi, and there's Volley Bear. Yumi? Yeah, so basically you build full tank and then you take Tower Aggro and just sit on someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> the first was oh, it's not as fun as eighty Yumi, but it's still pretty fun. So stupid. That's so funny though. <laughs> um, yeah, Volley Bear. But like, so like Ohm Wrecker. I watched a video recently. There's this guy I've been watching recently, uh, of RCs or something like that. Um. And he's been doing these things of why nobody plays or why nobody used or why items were removed. Um, it's a really interesting series that he does. Um, and in one of them, he was talking about items that people just didn't use that seemed like they should have been broken. Like Ohm Wrecker, for all intents and purposes, should have been a broken item, except for the fact 
that even though it gave amazing stats and even though it gave an amazing active, it was the wrong stats for the active. Because the champions that want to build it didn't want to build that first because it didn't give you like combat stats. But by the time you didn't need combat stats to lane with, you didn't need the Elm Wrecker to just stop towers because you were tanky enough to not be needing it. So like if they wanted to make Elm Wrecker a viable item, they had to do one of a couple of things, which would have been to be like, hey, it now builds out of a bomby cinder, which I think that would have made an epic as fuck mythic. We're just getting Ohm Wrecker pass uh, active for the fucking mythic. I would have loved that. I would have loved that. That would have been a, that's such a different, unique item than fucking the goddamn bullshit that is Frostfire Gauntlet. Like, you know how boring of an item Frostfire is and how useful it is? Or how boring it is? It's a stat stick item. That's all it is. That's all that item is. Yet, like, we apparently needed that item when we could have had the cool fucking idea of having an Ohm Wrecker to give you a different strategy for a split-pushing well, tank. They didn't want to remove too many items from the game, and if they were not to give Frostfire to that, they would have had to come up with some sort of other Iceborne item, because I don't think they wanted to remove many items from the game, like, uh, other than, like, Ohm Wrecker and uh, Banner Command, because they kept pretty much everything else. So they, like, they would have had to change something else, and I don't think they could have. It definitely couldn't keep the Sheen passive, because that was way too OP. Uh, but I honestly think it's better than having an Ohm Wrecker in the game. So why can mages have a legendary Sheen item, but everybody else has to build a fucking mythic? Um, because, I don't know, they, they don't auto-attack as much. Mages generally don't build it. But it's the fact that tanks like Gragas, you can just, when you got Sheen... You would just do like all of their health because you'd be maxing E and your your W. You have really high base damage, so Sheen was just a really unhealthy place. And then the item. Yeah, but now you just build Lich Bane on it and you do the same thing, but with more damage. Eh, Lich Bane kind of sucks. Ah, uh, so like I think you do Proto Belt into Lich Bane and it works like Echo. Um, people don't ever build Proto Belt on Gragas. They just. I know you just do Everfrost now, but like. Everfrost, yeah. But uh. Lich Bane only works, like, this is coming from, uh, like, every AP Gragas source, uh, and also, like, everybody I've ever talked to, except for Sark, because he never fucking plays Gragas, but, uh... That's true. We can, we can flame at him for not playing our champion. Yeah. Um, the only time you should ever build Lich Bane, uh, especially in lane, is selling boots for last item. Like, no, not lane. Something. No, don't play lane, I, Gragas. I play jungle, Gragas, boys. Take him I, back I, to I'm the role he's supposed to be in. <laughs> Actually, no, playing first, like, Look, if we go back to old W Gragas, I'm okay with going back to mid lane Gragas. But if we, you know, until then, take him back to the fucking jungle. All right, let him be a jungler again. Disruption Gragas is really fun though. You just like you don't really build that much damage, but you build like sixty percent CDR, and you just cancel mm -hmm. every single dash they've ever even thought of using. I love that build. I was doing it with Leandre's, right? Like, do the burn build, but everything's CDR except for Demonic Embrace, just because you know Demonic is stupid. I don't know. I don't know who at Riot decided that was a good item to build, but like, it's a great item for AP Bruisers. It's pretty dog shit for anybody else. <laughs> like. Now that it doesn't do a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Um, but, like, I love building it on a Zac this patch. That was the champion I didn't talk about this patch. Uh, Bruiser Zac is a lot of fun. Uh, you build Frostfire, and then you build full AP with the HP AP items. And then, uh, and then you just go in and, like, two-shot people. <laughs> yeah, you do so much damage. You got <laughs> Hell yeah. And if you don't two shot them, they just burn to death. <laughs> and then you're just like, okay, cool. Wait, did Yorick get buffed? Yorick? He got buffed last patch. This current patch he got nerfed. Is this a nerf? I can't really tell. It's a it's an adjustment because of the fact that he was too broken. So what they did is they uh what was it? They reduced the damage on your yeah. Your Mistwalker damage scales a little bit worse. Um it's negligible it doesn't really do much like it it's a buff and a nerf is because like the passive is nerfed but it's not that big of a nerf the e got nerfed but like 
okay, they ch they changed it, so now they do 40% increased damage, opposed to just 200% on the first attack. So instead of just nuking you as soon as they jump to you, now they beat your ass for 4 seconds and kill you. Um, I, I never really realized Europe was that broken. I heard people complaining about it, but I played against him one time, and I and Akashi was playing top and I was jungle. So I didn't even get to lane against him. The entire patch I played against him zero times. So I played against him zero times because I don't get filled to anything other than jungle because nobody likes this role. Um, and I've ne I never had to lane against him, but all of my top laners were bitching the entire patch of how broken he is. Um, I don't know. None of my champs really have issues against him. So I play him in the jungle now. He's actually really good in the jungle. Wait, Yorick in the jungle? So before, some of the problems he had was making sure you can efficiently get your ghouls up. Now that you can just throw your E at something and any of the fucking ghoul markers on the ground now spawn ghouls whenever something gets hit by your E. So Wait, that's always been like that. No, your E never summoned them before. Okay. That happened last patch that it allowed them to summon. And I learned that while aiming against them and it was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't read that patch. I was just like, oh yeah, his E makes them do more damage. And my friend's like, no, it makes them summon. I was like, wait, what? And I was playing against them in like a custom and somebody E'd me and it just summoned four ghouls and one shot me. I was like, that's dumb. <laughs> and uh, that's where I started playing him. Um, so yeah, in the jungle, you can now clear shit now because if you kill one minion with a Q, you can then E it to another camp, and as long as you're within range, they'll just leap to that camp. And then they'll block aggro for you so you don't take damage. And so you're killing the camps without taking damage. I mean, it's still a little bit slow, but it's it's pretty solid. And then once you get to a Triforce, you're really hard to duel. Like, you're extremely difficult for anybody to duel. And um, you're surprisingly good in team fights still, even though York's not necessarily known for it. Uh, because of how the E change works, if you have your Maiden and a couple of ghouls around you, you use the E, it jumps over there, that one person is kind of getting fucked, so they have to run away, so you can then just position your W where they're trying to run, and they're just kind of out of the fight now. <laughs> they have to deal with your minions or die. <laughs> um, but like his clear, his initial clear is pretty bad. Once you get your Maiden, your clear becomes really, really fast. Uh, you can take camp. You can take bear, uh, dragons and rift heralds really easily and really fast. Uh, your dueling potential is disgusting because you're Yorick. Um, so yeah, Yorick jungle is actually a legitimate thing right now. Sorry, what are your thoughts on Gwen? Uh, I haven't played her at all. I've only seen her play like once. She looks fun, but she also looks really weak. Sar Sark wants to know what Gwen is. That's not a champion that he's familiar with on uh, Wild Rift. She's also not on Wild Rift, so she's not <laughs> a champion. I just think she's clunky. I, I was chatting with a buddy of mine yesterday, and he agreed. Or he, he made the statement she was clunky. I was like, I couldn't figure out the word to say it, and I was like, yeah, that's right. She's clunky. Like, against bad players, she feels fine. But against, like, actually decent players, it's really awkward trying to get your Q timings off right. Like, she just feels like the animation takes a little too long. I'm not a fan of the champion. She just, she seems like a bunch of abilities that should not have been brought back. Just chucked in. It's like, an a it's an Ash, an old Ash Q. Wait, is it old? I don't know. It's an Ash Q that goes through people. As an all, it's like a, just a regular dash. Oh, it's an Irelia an ulti. ulti. It's old Irelia ulti is what her ulti is. Yeah. Old Irelia ulti, exactly. But it's worse um, one because you then have to hit somebody in between it to get the rest of the fucking projectiles. Exactly. And then her Q is like old Rengar Q, but garbage. And <laughs> It's the swim Q that doesn't move. Yeah, and then like her W is just a terrible Akali Shroud. No, 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 no. It's that like, is not at all what her W is. It's weird. Her it, W, I can't even describe it. Her W is a Samira fucking W, exception being that it moves with you and it lasts longer. It's like Zin Zhao R plus Samira W. I guess, yeah. It's just a little bit worse on both ends. It's like old Poppy Ult, but you could walk into it. 
uh, no, old we, poppy old. Oh no, old you're poppy old made you immune. Yeah, because you're not immune; you're just untargetable. Yeah, so it's like it's taking the idea behind Senna's W, which I think thematically makes sense. She's a mist person, so you have to have that kind of misty thing. So yeah, making her untargetable makes sense. She then blocks CC that's outside of the range, which is where it's kind of like Xin Zhao are. Because if you're outside of the range, the CC doesn't do anything to her. She just ignores it. On top of that, she doesn't... I don't know if it's intentional or not. I haven't read the shit about her. If it's intentional or not. Uh, I've noticed I don't take damage from people if they're outside of my W. Um, yeah, you're, you're not you're untargetable. So generally, you're not meant to be targeted. I don't really... So like, I stepped on a Cho'Gath Q. And I know it blocks the CC, but I thought the damage still went through. And it didn't. And then, like, there was a brand W that hit that hit in there, and I didn't take any damage from it. Huh. So, like, I'm, I'm confused, but it hasn't worked for all situations either. So I think it might be a bug where it's just not working properly, because I think they coded it somewhere in between the Zao and somebody else's. So, like, there's a bug where it's sometimes just you just don't take damage. So sometimes it's really OP. Other times, it's okay. Like... <laughs> Um, I think her dash is probably one of the coolest ones in the game. I like it. I think it's extraordinarily balanced in the way that it works. Um, it has a stupid long cooldown, but it's reduced if in the first three seconds after you use it, you hit an enemy with anything, and it reduces it by half. So it's really good for chasing. It is not good for running away with. <laughs> so, like, it really feeds into that style that you're supposed to be kind of a duelist that's chasing and fighting all the time. So it's about repositioning, not necessarily about running with. Now, you can potentially kite with it okay, but it's it's a long enough cooldown that kiting with it's kind of funky against people that are really good at running you down. So, like, Darius right now is her worst fucking nightmare. Yeah. Because he gets on you, and you, you just don't have the time to get away, and he just kills you. Like, you just can't do anything about it. To me, she seems like a, a cross between Kiana and Zoe. Like, she's a melee mid laner bait, or like a melee character who's, like, jumping in and trying to kill you. But it's also like Zoe, where you have to position really well, or you just, you just die. You just, you're not escaping. She's supposed Zoe, to be an AP bruiser, like but I don't see it. Yeah. I don't, just, yeah. <laughs> I want to take her full tank. Fuck, I've. I try all. Uh, I used to try all the new characters full tank top, but I kind of I kind of stopped after Zoe. That didn't work. Grass. Um, Take grass spawner. Hell oh, yeah, dude. Grasp yeah. Zoe. Oh, on no, Zoe. Oh I, no, please no. Fuck! I don't even want to choke. I think I might have taken grass, but grass was also awful back then. So, but if first cover which was just aftershock I, Zoe with the bubble. <laughs> I don't think I took Aftershock. I probably took, like, PTA or something. It was, like, right when the when it got reworked, so it was just... I had no idea what I was fucking doing. Also, I was building Tank Zoe. There was no, met, there was no uh, like, mobile fire for it. What was I meant to do? Oh, um, mobile fire. I miss mobile fire. It's still there. I know. But I missed back when you, like, were bullied for using it. You're now still you bullied for using it. it. You use mobile fire now, I blew you. There's better sites. I don't know. No, there is genuinely a good Pro builds? Pro builds is fine. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> all like, good players and one tricks have made mobile fire guides. Like, it, mobile fire is genuinely good now. That's what you think. You go on it and look. It's just not that commonly updated. I don't I trust that Panunu guide. <laughs> Wait, is it on mobile fire? It probably. I haven't actually looked. Why would I look at mobile fire, dude? Only scrubs use mobile fire. Was, I know there was a uh, uh, a thingy for Diora. Wait. Okay. Mm, new new nub. Oh shit! We are over okay. two hours Wild on this podcast. Fire. We are over two hours. I noticed that a while ago. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to do a wrap-up for this one, then. We can continue talking. I enjoy talking. We keep doing it on stream, so I don't mind that. Just so that we don't have, you know, a four-hour YouTube video that nobody's going to watch. Not like they're watching the one-and-a-half-hour ones anyways, but, you know. I mean, I think it's fine if... I mean, I'm good for a break, so I'm fine with that, but if the if it goes longer, I don't think it's a big deal, is it? Most podcasts that I watch are really long, so... 
I don't know. I generally watch like the 35 to 45 minute podcasts that then go to like an hour. They're supposed to be 45 minutes and then the producers always jump on getting pissed that they're not at 45 minutes and then they just keep going for another 30. <laughs> like Joe Rogan's goes for like two, three hours. See, but that's Joe Rogan. Goes for like four hours. Yeah, but also they're a lot more planned out than yeah, than our discussions. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're not the randomness yeah. of us. <laughs> I mean, I feel like our discussions are at least somewhat interesting for the most part. Yeah, I mean, we definitely go on some awkward ass, ta- weird ass tangents where you know people like Goomba would just be like, "Oh, they're talking about Starcraft again." I'm not even gonna lie. I went to the bathroom at some point in the middle, and you guys just kept talking. I changed clothes at one point when two of you were talking. Wait, what, you just uh-huh. changed? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if my mic and I changed clothes, I I really wanted to be in my pajamas. Damn it! Like I was not comfy. I still had my headset on and everything, so in case you guys softballed a question to me, I'd be ready. But I was, like, on the other side of my room with my headset on, changing clothes. <laughs> Upside, there's no camera, so nobody got to see it, but, you know. Take it back You're to, you know, tw- uh, take it back to 20, uh, you know, to 17-year-old Nick. I guess it would have been an upside, but. Uh, 17-year-old Nick, so the... Uh, very... So on that note, guys, this has been a great episode of the Dangerous Game Podcast. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this podcast, feel free to leave a like and a, a comment down below. Make sure to hit us up with questions and stuff you guys want to see maybe answered in the next podcast. You can join the Discord and also put in those questions in our podcast ideas category that room or whatever, whatever the fuck it is. Discussion thing. Yeah, um, yeah that. Um... <laughs> and uh if you want to watch more of us if you like any of these personalities our twitch streams will be listed down in the description in the youtube video and if you are watching on the twitch thank you so much for watching and hang out a little bit longer as probably just me and goomba will be talking or maybe just me talking who knows and thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you guys the next time goodbye